and welcome to Match Fishing TV. As you'll have noticed, Roger Mortimer is absent this evening. He's busy trying to put the central team back together. So you've got me on this occasion. I'm joined here by Matt Godfrey. Good evening, everyone. And Joe Karras. Good evening. In this evening's show, we're going to be looking at the Drennan Knockout Cup Round 1, the Maver Match This at Partridge Lakes, Fishermania at Woodland View, the David Hall Memorial Match at the Glebe, Feeder Masters at Southfield Res, Westwood Lakes at Daiwa Spring Classic Festival, and we've got three super video interviews to go through to. So let's kick things off then, boys. How about the Maver Matches Qualifier at Partridge Lakes? What unfolded there? It was a very close match, Alex. Um, the great thing about Partridge is you, everyone seems to get a lot of bites. There's a lot of small fish, a lot of ride, F1s, um, and everyone catches plenty of fish. And you look at them weights, Dave Shire's taking the lead with 122 pounds seven. Uh, Kerry Kirkwood, on fire at the minute, did well in the Drennan on Friday. Mm. Second with 115.7. Just announced behind him, Chris Weeder Jr. with 115.6. Um, Thomas Maiden Atkinson, fourth with £114. And £106.14 in fifth place, Chris Weeden Sr. So, really close weights. And I'm sure if you spoke to some of them third, fourth and fifth anglers, they could probably say, oh, we've had a caught a couple more. Yeah, we? yeah. Could one. be some regrets there, couldn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So, really exciting match. You needed £100 to make the top ten, and a couple of sections were won with £100. So, some of these fish have spawned now, haven't they? They're really switch, starting to switch back onto feed. A lot of venues are fishing quite well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Patrick is one of them places, isn't it? Like you say, you get loads of bites, and the weights are so close, aren't they? It's just brilliant, isn't it? Great fishing. Yeah. Great fishing, really tidy venue, well-run setup. One that we like to use for some of our events as well. No wonder it's so popular, really, is it? No. Exactly. You have to put your name on a waiting list to get on the open, man. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. I think there were 90 there yesterday on the open. It's worth saying about Dave, though, isn't it? Dave Shires, yeah. you know, we know him well from Lindo. He's a brilliant, brilliant angler. There's a few people probably haven't heard of him, but he's superb, so it's no surprise to us that... Do you know what I like that. about him the most? Go on. He's in the ginger club. <laughs> <laughs> ginger <angler. laughs> Has he signed the exclusive forms? He better have. <laughs> Crikey, we better check next time. <laughs> anyway, we caught up with the winner, didn't we? For a quick interview. Well, I'm here with today's match winner. You've been on Ribbon Peg 4. Yep. David Shires, very well done. Thank you. Maybe we'll match this final for you later this year. Yep. Talk us how you've caught today. Uh, shallow across on Caster. Started on the left hand side and caught a few there and it's dried up. So I've started another line to the right and had to fish two shallow lines all day. So basically just a shallow match then across two lines and, and keep changing. I mean, they're, yeah. they're so clever the fish in here, aren't they? I mean, I've never fished yeah, these lakes before. Yeah, but yeah, changing depths all the time and switching rigs. Right, right, that's interesting. Is this venue you come to a lot, Dave, or you were? No, no, I've got to Lindo, to be fair. Yeah. Probably, lads, so, yeah, it's a bit of a drive, but yeah, similar sort of fishing. Excellent, excellent. And what are your plans for the final? Are you going to go and put some time in, or? Oh, I see. I've got a one-year-old, so. Have you? See if we get some time off from the misses. Well, um, enjoy spending your winnings and uh, very you. best of luck. Cheers. Brilliant. Thanks a lot for that. Well done. So the next story, Southfield Res, great venue and the Feeder Masters. Yeah, the Feeder Masters, in another round. Um, brilliant venue, Southfield. Big open reservoir, but it's quite unique, the fact that it's only three or four foot deep. So when the wind surfers come off in your peg, they're often stand up to get <laughs> Really shallow and a bit really interesting though. It's turned into a great venue. Um, that man, Steve Ringer, took it apart on his first visit to the venue. Um, £38 job done for him. He is brilliant, isn't he? Unbelievable. First visit, and I understand he did something quite different to the, the regular approach. Yeah, I think the regular thing is obviously a longer line at maybe 60 metres and then a short line at 30, 35 metres. So he's just thought, well, fishing between it and he's fished 45 metres and just done the damage. But you were saying you spoke to him and he's like, created himself a new line later in the day and nicked yeah, some fish yeah. out there. So. so has that made a big difference for him, Matt? He said so. He said he did it to rest his other line. And I just find it really interesting when you talk to like Steve or any of them England feeder boys yeah. about feeder fishing, they think so much about it. I must hold my hands up and say when this feeder team and feeder fishing first come about or become really popular, I thought, oh, they just <laughs> fill the feeder up, chuck it out, get the rod pulled in. But that, you listen to him and Steve said, oh, I fished a little feeder full of worms, nothing else in my feeder, a short up length, caught a few at like 45 metres, but felt he needed to rest it. And mm. very much like he would a pole line, started another line yeah, yeah. on a feeder, dropped back on it and used his favourite mix of 
50-50 Ringers are dark and Ring, Ringers are original which yeah, faithful. well you've said to me before that's, that's the England feed that's team right. one of the favourites yeah, Phil and Steve they're lovely isn't that, aren't they? yeah. didn't they all join each other's section as well in this Phil, match? Steve and Jeff yeah they all caught as well they all got 20 odd pounds but obviously Liam. Steve with 38 but but you look at the qualifiers, Steve Ringer obviously qualified, um, Jim, Ab Jim Evans sorry, and Gareth Lambert, so well done to all three of them. And look at the backup weights, I mean, we're looking at them here. Jim Evans second, £27.11. Yeah. Mr M Shaw third with 27.5 and P Swift fourth with 27.4. So look how close they are. Well, the thing is as well, notice looking at the results, they're not all consecutive pegs, they're well spaced out yeah. as well, so there's fish to catch sure. all over. But here's you praising feeder fishing. When you were on pole fishing, you weren't so complimentary. Now you've moved to match. Feeder fishing is the greatest feeder thing. What's going great, on here? Feeder is a great method, Alex. <laughs> it's worth saying, though, isn't it? Like you're saying, you know, you think it's, there's a lot more to it than you thought, but you haven't got a float to read your swim. So mm. there's a, you know, a lot of theory that has to go into it, isn't there, really? Definitely. Yeah. Like, well, and I do think, as, yeah, and, and with feeder fishing, I do think, uh, you know, a lot of feeder anglers don't use the rod tip enough to tell them what's going on. It's your eyes and ears under the water, isn't it? You know, and it's, and it's all right waiting for the rod to get pulled off the rest when you're carping. That's how you're fishing from. But for silvers and skimmers and roach and all sorts of that, there's a lot to be learnt with braid, yeah. fine, fine quiver tips. Really interesting. Think, yeah. Hey, did you see what Jeff Ring caught? Yeah. Well, Massive eye, didn't he? I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. Big four-hander. <laughs> Lovely fish. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth saying, like, because Southfield connects to the Aaron Calder Canal, and there's quite a few in the system, isn't there? Like, yeah, for, uh, yeah. Dotted about that have got in various ways. It frustrates me a little bit, you know, with this eyed malarkey and fish like that, because eyed are naturally river fish from mm. Scandinavia, and you look at that one that Jeff caught on um, Sunday, it's a big golden fish, looks pristine condition, very different to the ones you see at like partridge that are silver and they look a bit like limp. Sad, and, yeah, this one's like a big wild fish, it looks really happy and natural. And you're not allowed to stock them into our rivers, but what? Imagine if, like, the Trent or the Avon at Evesham had a great big hide in it to catch it's like, so good, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be amazing. Well, it opens it up, doesn't it? Like your, your ventures abroad and things, you know, there are species to catch, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And they, they require a different approach and things. Some areas might not be so good for certain species, but the hide might hold up there. Yeah. You know, it gives something else to go for, doesn't it? Aggressive feeders, aren't they? So we'd love it to catch on a river, wouldn't they? Go and put in our rivers. Yeah. Ooh. Well, nice day out there for Jeff then, and fantastic result for Steve once again. So next on the list, we've got the Westwood Lakes Diwa Spring Classic, and that man Andy Bennett, again. Another festival win for him. Yeah. Like, like, like we've been talking about earlier, it's an F1 festival, you might as well just pay him out. <laughs> Western, our one at Tunnel last year, this. You I'll tell you what, I did have a little bit of stiff opposition though, looking at these results, because second place went to Will Rays and he had the same points as Andy. Um, so he he's not bad, is he? He's Andy, isn't he? He's Andy. Well, he ain't Andy. Andy won. <laughs> um, but they both had three points, three section wins. They drew in each other's rotation as well. Um, luckily, they avoided each other's sections mm. every day. That would have been an interesting one, wouldn't it? Big time. But it came down to weight in the end, and Andy ended up with a £433 to Will's £394. So great weight. So about and £39 difference split in the top two. Uh, top quality class anglers. Mm, definitely. And it was mostly shallow fishing, was it? I think, yeah, there's, there's quite a few different lakes there at Westwood. There's yeah. some more established ones and there's some newer lakes. On the newer lakes, it's very much a speed race and a lot of little F1s shallow. And then mm. the older lakes, a lot more across, margins, worms and pellets, that kind of thing. So real nice fishing. Lovely. And what about the rest in the, in the top five, top ten as well? There was a lot of fish to be caught, weren't there? Certainly was. Luke Morley was third with four points and £357 in weight. Um, Adam Swain also on four points, but with slightly less weight, £311, mm. he was fourth. And Martin Green, another dial man, was fifth. Again, four points, but £282. Loads of fish caught, brilliant fishing. Cracking menu. Really good. Oh. 108, wasn't there, fishing? So it was a real yeah. good, brilliant festival. Well, the thing is as well with Andy Bennett, you know, the, the digital e-magazines we have done with him as well have proved really popular, haven't they? He's a man who knows his stuff and he's a man people do want to learn from and evidently, can learn a lot from as well. Definitely. So then, over to the David Hall Memorial match at the Glebe. Yeah, the second year it's run. I mean, unfortunately I couldn't make it, but I mean, you two had brilliant days, didn't you? Fished his brains out, didn't it, the venue? That man dead shit took it apart, didn't he? The man is just incredible, isn't he? Absolutely scary. I mean, last year um, he fished this match and he was actually filming um, one of the e-mags for his Think Fishing. 
and obviously concentrating on the filming and talking to camera he's put too many fish in a net and it's cost him about 40 pounds in weight i think he wasn't very happy about it were <laughs> he was not uh, no so he went back this year <laughs> with a vengeance i think not happy about it is a slight understatement <laughs> if i'm honest but yeah stuck a little 330 pound of lake one car onto the scales absolutely obliterated it miles in front of second place you could say <clears throat> mm. or did you come second did you <laughs> Well, it wasn't me that said it, but others have said that that man in second was the performance of the day. So <laughs> I heard he was on an end peg. Yes, that <laughs> bit is true. <laughs> but no, it was really good with Des, uh, Des actually winning it, as you say, last time yeah. around. Some issues. Uh, David Haynes, who ran the match, actually termed it as poetic justice, yeah, which I thought was very pleasant. But no, great day out. There was loads of fish caught. The top, what was it, the top nine anglers overall, all, all had over £200. Yeah. As you said, I was second with £285 off peg wow. 28. How did you catch that? Um, I don't want to talk too much about me, oh, you know. Come on, come on. Go on, all right. Um, short on the pole, corner maggots, a little bit of ground bait, and down the edge. Uh, when they were there down the edge, they were, they were queuing up, but nice. they weren't hanging themselves. You know, it's, I know it's easy to say, oh, it must have been solid. Yeah. You know, £285, but at, you have. It, they just don't hang themselves there, you know, and it really took a bit of thinking about, and, and, and I enjoyed it. Uh, let their shit beat me, obviously it'd look bad otherwise, you know, yeah, yeah. but great day out, loads of fish caught, unbelievable venue. And we got a nice little video interview with the man himself afterwards. Let's have a quick look at that now. Well Des, the David Orr Memorial match today, you are the champion. Cheers Matt. No surprise. Very, much. Very well done mate. Cheers mate, thank you. Tell them what you've weighed. I've had 330 pounds, so I've had an absolute brilliant day. You know, I don't, where I live we don't sort of catch them sort of weights apart from a couple of areas and right. I'm, I'm not you know, I don't sort of go out and try and catch them weights, but this place is unbelievable. And what, how have you caught that today? Um, I mean? Well, because I'd done me think fishing last year up there, I did learn a bit, even though I was filming, I had to stop and mess around a bit. Yeah. I did learn a little bit. Caught quite a few fish on expander pellets and I fished out too far. So today I fished 10 meters with pellets, right. which has been good. Lots of small carp there, the sort of two, two and a half pound fish. Um, but last year I went down the edge too late. And I thought, I'm not going to make the same mistake today. Well, I've actually fished down the edge for probably, probably two and a half hours, I would say. Wow. And looking at this peg, it's a yeah. really interesting place that you've actually fished, because you've fished behind these yeah, reeds, got the, Yeah, I've got this tough, which looks really nice. And I think, you know, so I've actually fished past it, even though it's been an absolute nightmare to fish. So I've had to fish a little short line, because yeah. I'm striking up into that tree. But that's what I felt was right. I plumbed up, it was like three, just over three foot deep. Yeah. And all I fed is corn and hemp. Lovely. I've not put any casters or anything like that. So I looked at the depth and I thought if I go and put a lot of particles in, yeah. like like some you know, like casters and maggots, they're just gonna come off the bottom and have a nightmare. So I just thought just I've probably fed Four tins of corn and two tins of hemp down there. So it's sensible to say you've got 330 yeah. pounds. Have you actually used really heavy gear to catch them? Yeah, I've fished um, 019 power line main line, 4x14 yeah. little carp for float, um, 017 power bottom hook length, and I've fished a 14, 456 hook. It's quite a big hook, and I'm, yeah, only, yeah. I'm only hooking the corn because I've had to. I'm about to fish a short line in strike. I thought if I don't fish a big hook, I'm just going to miss too many bites. Right. So I fished a gaff, really. Just hook the corn really, you know, really lightly. Biggest piece of corn I can get out of my tin. And it's been great. I've just, I've just fished uh, the biggest um, cad pot. Yeah. And just filled it up every fish with corn. 330 pounds, match yeah. winner. Cheers. Incredible. Let's go and get your winning. Cheers, Matt. Thanks, mate. Mm. Super. Thanks very much for that. Great little interview. Plenty to be learned there. So the junior pole champs, back to Westwood Lakes again. Yeah, um, that took place yesterday. Um, it was, it's nice to have a little bit of junior fishing. I don't know about Oh you. yeah. We haven't, I don't think we've mentioned hardly any junior fishing on this TV show so far. So I saw it on Facebook this morning. Definitely worth a mention. Um, it's a team event for young anglers, mm -hmm. pole only, held at Westwood. Um, and it's nice to see young anglers getting involved in team fishing. Um, it was won by Match Aid Blue with nine points and second place and second place went to Workshop A team, which is quite good because that's the old team I used to fish yeah. for, yeah. Ah. Um, and third place there was a tie between Workshop B and Census A4, who both had 13 points, but it were good fishing again. Um, a little youngster won it individually, Matt Baven, um, from Sheffield area. He had £75. 
James Allen was second with £69 and Aidan William third, so well done to the young ones. It's a great hub there, isn't it? You know, that sort of location. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them have travelled a long way to fish this, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember looking at some of the names of fish in there. Gone far from far and wide to fish it, so fair play to him. Yeah, oh, brilliant. And as you say, it's really good to see the juniors getting involved, getting a bit of exposure, getting into it, you know, being brought on by the adults with more experience and things and picking it up as they go along, learning. No, and let's be honest, with the results, they're no slouches, are they? Definitely not. The only thing was, so when we used to fish them junior matches, we used to get on coaches and they used to literally be hundreds, hundreds didn't they? And that has definitely gone these days, mm. I think. But... I think possibly some moves over specimen carp fishing. Yeah. You know, there's big fish to be caught, you know, and, and maybe extent, if they try it, they catch a 20, 30 pounder. Uh, it's something I've talked about a lot previously and a bit of an instant gratification thing. Ticking a box like you. It is, yeah. you know, and then it's kind of like, well, fishing, that's done. What next? There is certainly an element of that with it. And coming through the ranks, as it were, really, you know, catching roach on a cane with a bent pin yeah, as you yeah. start out and going all the way through like that takes a lot of time and dedication. Does, yeah. Anyway, let's take a quick break. Back in a mo. Welcome back. So let's go straight into the Fishermania at Woodland View. A lot of talk about Fishermania this year. Mm. What about this round? Well, this one was at Woodland View, and uh, I think there was 160 on it, I think. Um, but unfortunately, there was 25 no-shows, but I mean, we'll talk about more about that in a minute, but Christoph Vakovi had won it. Hey, well done. I think we've done all right there. Good effort there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pound eight from Bali. So, I mean, Bali's one of the narrower lakes there. Only picked down one back, so I should imagine he's probably got a few on a feeder and a few maybe later on on the pole. Yeah. But, um, it's been a good match. I mean, Dan Squires was second with 82 pound off Ghost. Um, Matt Roger was third with 81 pound, and John Arthur was fourth. 70 odd pounds, so it's, you know, it's been a real nice match. Yeah, and Andy Geldart again, 74 pound, he was there in fifth, wasn't he? Sneaking in the back. Though. And I know Mike's put some new accommodation on the venue there as well, hasn't he? He's put some log cabins up. Yeah. Um, I went there to shoot a piece with Lee Edwards not too long back, and they were just kind of ready to roll, so I think he's hoping to expand in that way. But it's a good venue, good venue. It is a good venue, and on the fishing front, you know, it's a, it's a place that I've enjoyed. I've done a little campaign there myself. <laughs> Short and sweet, can't Short and sweet, yeah. Not particularly successful one either at that, but anyway. Um, but you know, it's a great venue. It's, it's, it's great facilities, good Big fishing. Fish. Yeah. It, it's a, a 90 pound. There's a lot of anglers who would have gone away probably thinking, I might have been able to catch that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's, like it's one of them, it's the total opposite to what we were talking about with partridge and tunnel and venues like that. Here you might need 15 to 20 fish. Yeah. But then you know, at tunnel you might need 100 fish, but mm. it's just a total different. Way of fishing, isn't it? See, that suits me. You know, I like not being too busy. You've got to have time for sandwiches, time for <laughs> something to eat and drink. Yeah, tool down and just have a little <laughs> refresh and then carry on. But I like that. I, I think a lot of these big weight fish race venues, fine. If that's your thing, no problem at all. For me, I like to have a bit of time to think about what I'm doing, try and winkle out one fish and then maybe another elsewhere. You know, what about you two? I hate that style of fishing. I'm not good at it whatsoever. I'm so impatient. I just sit there and like, I should be doing something else. I should have gone under by now. <laughs> oh no, he's caught one. He's just sat there all day. <laughs> I quite like it in the sense that you can always come back. Like going into the last hour, you could be getting battered by those either yeah. side here. 
but then drop down the edge late on, catch 15 carp in the last hour and you can still win the match. Whereas at Partridge or Tunnel, when you catch behind, you, yeah, if you fall behind, if you go up and have a pee and yeah. lad out next to you, you catch us off you. There, you? No. no. It's worth saying though, on this match, there's 25 no-shows, which is really disappointing, isn't it? Well, this, this is the point I wanted to get back to about, not obviously not just this round, but the, the event overall, Fishermania, and it's been such a shame because the, a lot of the press they've received has been quite negative, yeah. maybe as a result of this semi-final in place. But like you say, people have paid their money oh, really? and yet there's still 25 no-shows on this yeah, round. Saturday match as well, like you can understand it a midweek, you know, people yeah. have to work yeah. last minute or whatever. This is a Saturday match, people have already paid the money. Hmm. I mean... What do you think it is? I don't know, but why don't they just give the only trust to ring and get somebody else to yeah. fish, you know? Would that mean that there's 25 spare pegs? Oh, potentially. Yeah, I know John I've got on as a reserve, so right, obviously right. the few reserves will have got on. But yeah, 25 yeah, no Must shows. be alright, pain in the morning, like all of a sudden Pegging. 25 pegs you've got to take out, or maybe yeah. just leave them in. You're going to end up gaps on yeah, these not, people consider the pegging, don't they? And then all exactly. of a sudden there's gaps. You sat there fishing to try and qualify to win £30,000 in a final, and somebody two pegs up could have yeah. three or four spare pegs. Well, oh, we know from running our own events, it does mess things up, not only section wise, but overall giving anglers room. We talked about this, didn't we? People packing up early and things as well, but also yeah. not showing. But there is a, there is an onus on the angler as well to let the match organiser know you're not coming. I know they fill it with reserves and things, but it's not quite ideal, is it? Yeah, so. Anyway, that's, that's enough about that for now. So what about this venue record then? New venue record, broken, smashed. Certainly was. I got a phone call from um, the venue owner of Aston Park Fishery, or Browning Aston Park Fishery as it is now. Um, and last week the venue record got smashed by Stuart Holmes who caught £184.14 a carp from the popular Strip Lake. Um, and it's worth noted, noting that at Aston, Alex really prides himself on the silverfish sport as well. So although carp won, he made a big point in saying that um, the guy who came second caught £116 a just eyed. So he sort of said to me, look, people are coming here and fishing for silverfish and beating the people yeah. who are fishing for carp. It was Dave Micklethwaite who had that lovely net of fish. We've got a picture of it to put up just there. And there's some exciting stuff happening. He's really trying hard, is Alex. Um, he used to be an ex the Blacks angler, so he knows, he, he thinks like an angler still. He's a really nice yeah. lad. And um, he's introduced something called the Champion's Choice Weekly Prize which is a little bit of fun and they implement a prize every week for a certain like category so you could have the best ginger angler of the week or um, the best youngster of the week or this week was the first time he run it and he just did the best weight of the week and at the end the winner gets um, a nice browning t-shirt and a cap worth about 25 quid Nice. So it's keeping people coming back to his venue. It's really nice to see Browning getting behind that and you know supporting with some prizes, extra little incentive. It's exciting for the anglers, especially if it's local venue. You know, people like to go and do these things, don't they? And there's a two hundred pound challenge in place there. Yeah, it certainly is. That one's it's, good, isn't it? It's so popular, isn't it? I mean, it's it's minutes off the M1, isn't it? Yeah, right next to the M1. You can get there dead quick, there's loads of bikes, mixed fishing, what more do you want? Yeah, he does an over 55s match, there's Thursday evening matches now and this £200 challenge, because there's been 184, Alex has teamed up with his sponsors Browning and they've said that they're going to give away a Browning Zeiton Revolution margin pole worth £350 in cash. Um, to the first person that breaks £200, pounds. Yeah. So I'm sure that there'll be a few going and trying to smash that now. Yeah. Well, it all adds to the excitement, doesn't it? Definitely. So he's really making waves there, isn't he, doing some good things. Yeah. So Makings, not say A-League, yeah. one of your stomping grounds, yeah. Joe. Yeah, it's a popular fixture on a Saturday at, um, at Makings, nice spring league. And my good mate Stu Pulse won it for the second year running. What an angler. Six <laughs> straight section wins. And for the final round, he went and won the match as well. It takes some doing, doesn't it? It really does. He's so good there. I mean, he's so good anywhere, but it's, it's going back to the old Woodland View thing, it's really patient fishing at making, you know, the, I call them professional tackle dodgers, because you feed a bit of <laughs> and they're a real pain to catch. Maybe Someone's fed them too many rule books. It's just so <laughs> frustrating. There's so many fish in there, but it, it's really hard to catch. And Stu's obviously got some real good stuff sorted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's only had 13 fish for his weight of 85 pounds this week. So, you know, it's patient fishing. Yeah. Little traps, setting little traps and waiting for the last hour because that's when they catch a lot of fish. Yeah. Well, having fish makings a lot over the years, it was one of my regular winter haunts. And I remember on phase two and three, which is a lot of sort of canalised lakes, fishing to islands, 
when it was gin clear, you used to see the ghosties. It, obviously, they were the most visible, and the mirrors and commons underneath just used to circulate the islands, and you wouldn't get an indication of it. Professional tackle dodgers is about right yeah. for it. <laughs> it's just you can't. It, it was one of them venues. It was the first time I'd seen that sort of thing, and it's fishing you swim, and you don't catch them, you know. And it's it does take some sussing out. Perhaps, don't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. they know their surroundings, don't they? They know their environments, and I know. Some people snigger at it saying, oh, these fish are switched on. But they're streetwise, aren't they? These fish are streetwise. Them fish in Makings have been in there years. Yeah. It's one of the oldest commercials. You know, they might have been in there 15 years, some of them fish. Yeah, they've so seen some they've seen, Yeah, they've seen some, some bait, haven't they, thrown at them, so. Oh, God, yeah. To catch them, yeah, fair play. Oh, awesome. Cool. Really well done, Stu. Great result, Mr. Consistent. On to Daiwa Hallcroft, then. A venue we all like. Certainly is. It was the um, final of the Legion League this weekend, or yesterday on Sunday, and that was won by a Sheffield angler who we know, Chris Greenside. Yeah, great angler. Yeah, fantastic performance. He had £121 from outer Mount Peg 6, I think he was on. Mm -hmm. um, Big fish? Yeah, yeah, he had one. You can see it on screen now. He had one £18. You can see him getting over that. They don't look too happy with yeah, it. Yeah, really it? excited to be caught that, don't yeah. he? Grappling with it. Yeah. <laughs> But we talk about these big fish and not having many bites. Chris only had 16 carp and a handful of skimmers for his £120. I caught them on meat up and down in the water. Mm. A few shallow, a few on the bottom. So he's had a good day's fishing, but not really busy. You know, he's about 20 bites for his £120. Yeah. So going back to what we said about Woodland View, that sort of thing appeals to me. Yeah. You know, and clearly it appeals to a lot of other anglers because popular. it's a popular venue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, out moats a big pool as well. Massive lake. You know, there's a lot of water to go out. Lots of different things work. Back in the days of Jamie Masson, used to smash it up there with paste, didn't he? Yeah, certainly did. It's almost like a natural venue, Hotcroft, especially that moat. It's so big. You know, the big wild carp and. It's not like a commercial where you're, getting, you're on top of the fish all the time. You know, these fish can go where they like. So yeah, yeah. It was interesting you said that about pace because the chap who finished third, Mr. S. Twig, um, he had £108 and he caught on pace. Um, and look at second place weight, um, L. Hewison. £118, so it's been quite close. Mm. Good man. There's some £20 carp in there, so yeah. arguably one more fish and anyone could have won. And as these fish have come out the back end of spawning, obviously some places not quite just yet, they haven't finished, have they? But yeah, other places, you know, are starting to pick up, aren't they, fishing wise, and some fish to be caught everywhere. Yeah. So who won the league then, Matt? It was Steve Clark, the ex Trentman. He goes to Walcroft a lot, he's awesome, isn't he? Yeah, I love Steve because he's right messy, isn't he? Like, he's boxing. <laughs> he has top kits everywhere. He's kidding up like mine. Yeah. He's a bit of you, Joe. Yeah, and then, like when he weighs in, he just kicks like two million pounds yeah. on the scales every time. But he won the league with 81 points. Looks like a bomb's gone off. Yeah. Pete Miles was second with 80, and Chris, who won the match, was third. Some money to be won as well there. Certainly, yeah. well, Chris got 600 quid for winning that match yes. at the weekend, so that's why that league's so popular, I think. Yeah, brilliant. Awesome. Well, really well done to everyone on that, and Luke Sears, who runs a brilliant venue there, doesn't he? Yeah. So the final story of this evening's show, the Drennan Knockout Cup Round 1. We've been looking forward to this for ages, yeah. so we kicked it off at Tunnel Barn Farm. What a you know brilliant event and what a venue to host it at. You know we we, we speak regularly about how good tunnel is and yeah that, that kind of big match where you want it fair throughout. There's no way better. Is yeah. It really? Well, that's it. The thing is some. It's fair that people question why we choose these sorts of venues. Um, obviously, this, this event in association with Drennan International, but we choose Tunnel. Yes, it's centrally located, but the fishing is so fair. We used eight lakes, didn't we? Yeah. And you could not have picked beforehand where the winner was going to come from. The facts, well, I mean, what is it? There's house, new, canal, and extension all in the frame in the top five. Yeah. yeah. It just shows you, you know, everything you need to know. Brilliant. The winner, Mr. Dale Shepherd, man on fire at the minute, house peg 33, 129 pounds. We've got a nice little interview with him that we'll put on in a bit, but a close match. Mark Mayle in yeah. second with £127, Robbie Griffiths third, £123, Steve Barrettluff again, £123 for fourth, and Tyrone all lasting with £115. But it's worth yeah. mentioning as well, the money involved in this event this year has been brilliant with the support yeah. from Drennan. Yeah. Um, we've got it so that the winner of every round, whether it be this one that's had 140 fishing or the semi-final that might have eight fishing, the winner of every round walks home with a thousand pounds. Yeah. Well, on top of that as well, there was a super pool, wasn't there? Yeah. Paid top ten sections, loads of money. But well done to all the qualifiers that made it as well from the, from the qualifying rounds we ra we ran. You know, for some of them, getting to rub shoulders with those sort of guys on that match is really good. But sixty-seven pounds you needed to get through, so the top sixty went through. Yeah. 
brilliant fishing. Great fishing. It's worth saying you got through as well, Matt, didn't you? I knew, you did yeah, you? Yeah, it's not through, didn't we? Hey, guess who else got through? Go on. Tom Scholar. Yeah, not that reigning champion, Tom yes. Scholar. Oh, <laughs> he never mentioned it. He had the El Cigar and he got cruising through. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Running around with a trophy in his hand. <laughs> <Yeah. like that. laughs> so he's going back to the old fish show thing, because this first year I've done that, and it's been a bit of a bit of a damp squib really for me. Yeah. Whereas this on, on Friday, you know, driving over a smile on my face, brilliant fishing. Like, I mean, the, the stack of envelopes you paid out. Like, that one is like, <laughs> oh, the payout took about an hour and a half. It took, <laughs> you know, there was that much to pay out. And, uh, and it should be a great series, shouldn't it? So, so what about onto the new Junction Canal for that, for round two? What's gonna, what do you think's yeah, gonna happen so there? On the 1st of July, it's a great venue, the Junkie. That should be a really fair fishing match. Um, be some ropes to catch, some eels, maybe some skimmers. Certainly well, I fished a mash on there this time last year. Um, the chap next to me has caught two rather large chub on the bomb and lob worm. Guess how much he weighed, two chub. Go on. Uh, 11 pound, 15 oh, ounces. Crikey. I like a few chub, Jevons. They can change the game, can't they? Certainly. Let's be honest. A few of them I'll put in a bit as I reckon on that day, so. Well, what a great event to be involved in, and thanks once again to Drennan International for their support. Brilliant. Let's catch up with Dale and his winner's interview. Well, today has been round one of the 2016 Drennan Knockout Cup here at Tunnel Barn Farm. And with me, I've got the champion on the day, Mr. Dale Shepherd. Thank you, Matt. Well done, sir. Awesome performance. We're on your peg, 33 on house pool. And what weight have you had off here today? 129.15, Matt. Awesome. And really? have you caught that lot? Just fish worms across, 13 metres, really enjoyed it. Lovely. Lots Lovely. of lights. Busy day shipping in and out all shipping day. Shipping in and out all day. Brilliant. Not a lot down edge, but... Did you did you fancy it this morning when you drew here? I thought I were on an eye pool first, to be honest <laughs> with you, and then realised I were on house, so I did fancy it when I went, when I walked down here and I had a bit of a rub. Awesome. Fantastic. Really enjoyed it, mate. And your hands are covered in black stuff. Now, is this some sort of secret bait you've been using, or have you been in pit? No, just worms, casters and compost, a bit of soil. Yeah. Say a bit of soil, a lot of soil, maybe 10 pints. But just, I like to fish like that when I come here. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Get mucky and catch plenty of fish. <laughs> and you've won over a thousand pounds today for winning this match. Obviously, yeah, Matt. the winner of every round actually gets a thousand pound. Yeah. What are you going to spend that on? Lindor Festival next week. Awesome. There'll probably be another win under your belt there as well. Oh, hopefully, Matt. Well done again today, pal. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Superb. Thanks a lot for that. Well, that's about all we've got time for this evening. On next week's show, we've got Western Pools Festival, Maver match Matchsis from Gold Valley and the Glebe, Fishermania at Messingham Sands and Coleman's Cottage, Feeder Masters at Gold Valley, plus much, much more. My thanks to Matt, to Joe. We'll leave you with a few shots from round one of the Drennan Knockout Cup at Tunnelbarn Farm. Tight lines.